and love and and satisfy your spouse. Now here is a picture of some weddings. After the wedding, they wash each other's feet, showing that they want to care for each other. So can we uh, have this concept also that we want to uh, serve each other in a marriage, not just serve, uh, not just have the other person serve me, but I want to serve the other person too, and we want to. Uh, massage or do things that make the other person feel happy. Proverbs 5.18 Let your fountain be blessed and rejoice with the wife of your youth. Now the fountain here is, uh, represent the wife. So let your wife be blessed and rejoice with the wife of your youth and rejoice with her. Make her feel happy and make her uh, bless her life so that she, she uh, gets what she wants. She, she's satisfied with the relationship. So in the marriage there's an element of loving and satisfying the spouse. Make the person feel happy. Now many people when they're married they just want something back or they just want things to go normal. You know we just eat and wash dishes and cook and work and earn money and every day they sit there but then it's no exchange of love. So I hope we do things to make the other person feel happy uh, God makes us happy and in heaven we'll, be, we'll all be happy. So uh, it's not just uh, doing our duties in our life, but we can make each other happy and then we can enjoy the relationship, enjoy life on earth. And then to change someone is the low efficiency way is to accuse and yell and have bad attitude and nag and does not listen and teach too much. But high efficiency would be to affirm instead of accuse. You're doing good. You have tried. Uh, you have tried very hard. And speak gently instead of yelling. And being kind and gentle instead of having bad attitude. And listen and respond instead of nagging. So listen to the person and, and see the feelings and the needs. So how do you feel and what do you need? So we listen and then respond. I, heard that uh, you'd like me to spend more time with you. I'm happy to do that. So that way it will listening and responding. And thank you for telling me your feelings. Thank you for talking with me. Thank you for responding to me. So this is uh, ways, these are ways of responding. And don't nag. And then care about him and think about his needs and guide him to analyze and guide him to change. So we can guide him to change. To change someone is better to use uh, positive ways instead of nagging and yelling. But most people they just yell and accuse and ye and uh, nag, and it, it's not going to change anything. And if your family member doesn't want to change, sometimes, uh, unfortunately, some s spouses don't want to change at all. They always yelling. They always saying negative words. They don't change. Then what can we do? First, we get inner healing from God every day that God is loving me, so I have the joy of the Lord. Hallelujah, thank you, I can enjoy your presence, I can be healed. And then two, get comfort from God that we have, uh, that we comfort from, uh, in our heart, that we are comforted. Uh, and then live in peace and love and no burdens, because even though the person is not is not a living, you know, uh, you know, it's not loving us. We want to have the peace of God and the love of God, and I don't want any burdens. I try my best to change a relationship. If it doesn't change, it's, uh, it's his responsibility. I don't have to carry the burden. I just relax and I enjoy you. And then treat him or her with peace and love. So we want to treat him or her with, uh, with peace and love and care about him and her and, uh, treat him nicely. Even though he doesn't treat me nicely, I still treat him nicely. And then gradually influence him or her. Gradually change her by our love. Changing people is not by yelling. Changing people is by loving and, and by communicating and inviting the person to tell us our, his feelings. And then have realistic expectation, lower unrealistic expectation expectation. If someone always yells, we don't expect him to stop right away. Uh, but 
you know, we try to be nice, maybe he'll improve a little bit. So lower the expectation from a high expectation to a low expectation. We don't expect that much. Then we won't be disappointed that much. And we pray for wisdom and love to, uh, to treat him uh, or her. So we pray for wisdom and love so I, I can love him even though he doesn't love me. So if one church, one family member doesn't love, then we want to do this. Okay, here the last part. How to build a relationship with children, to have an enjoyable relationship. The first is set a good example to our children. First Peter 5.3, now here is talk about shepherding uh, the flock of God uh, for pastors. But it will apply to our children relationship too. Nor as being lords over those entrusted to you, but being examples to the flock. So it's not just controlling them. It's not controlling them, but to be examples to them. What kind of example? How we love God and obey God. How we always pray to God and repent of our sins. That our children see that we repent and love God. God, you're so wonderful. Hallelujah. Praise the Lord. Then they will follow our example. How we treat people. How we are nice to people. We are kind to people and forgive people. And how we manage our thinking and emotions. How we... Uh, don't blow up how we, you know, even if things happen uh, in a very negative way, we still stay peaceful. We always have positive thinking when we talk, it, always saying there is hope, there is a way out. Uh, you are doing well, you are doing, you're improving. I appreciate your, your improvement. And then four, how we use our lives. So, so uh, as parents, we want to use our life constructively to bless people so they see that we are we are constructive with our life and then they will change following our example and then build a friendship with our children now some parents they think that the children just yell at them and command them to do things and uh, it's just a, like a, a master and a, a slave relationship God doesn't treat us like that God wants us to have a loving relationship so always think of God how does God treat us then we want to treat other people. So we want to spend time with children. If you don't have time to, to spend time with the children, then don't have children, don't get married. If you get married, expect to spend time with the spouse and the children so that they will be careful, so that they grow up in a loving relationship, so that they learn to love people. And then number two, listen to their feelings and their needs so they have, uh, they're, uh, they're, they're unhappy about something, and we don't want to accuse. We listen to them and, and respond to their feelings. I know you're unhappy. I'm sorry you feel unhappy. I know that person did this to you and, make, and that makes you very unhappy. So we respond to the feelings saying that I do care your feeling. I feel your feelings. And then feel the feelings. And Romans 12, 15. Rejoice with those who rejoice and weep with those who weep. Um, so when they are happy, we're happy with them. If they've done something right, and then we say, wow, you're wonderful, you did, you did, you've done something wonderful, you've done something very good, then we, we are uh, responding to them. And then uh, we're rejoicing with them. And then weep with those who weep. If they, have, you know, if they um, are not happy, that we feel their feelings also. Avoid hurting our children's family. So Colossians 3.21 Fathers don't, do not provoke your children lest they become discouraged. So we don't want to hurt the feelings. We, we don't want to have to hurt the feelings when we teach them. We don't have to make them fear us. We want them to trust us just as the Heavenly Father helps us to trust Him. And then how to communicate with the children. Treat them with love and respect and build up a trust relationship with them that uh, always love them and respect them and that uh, so that build our trust relationship they learn to trust us that we are trustworthy and don't provoke them don't make them unhappy appreciate their strengths appreciate what they've done guide them to treasure themselves so uh, you are precious you are very important and guide them to experience God guide them to experience the Holy Spirit see how much God loves you and God we can experience him we can be strengthened by him and guide them to have hope in love life 
that guide them to see that your life has hope you become better and better you grow up to be a better person and guide them to make the best of life that your life can go higher and higher okay and so at the na last issue here should father mother and children eat separately in Revelation 3.20, Jesus said, Behold, I stand at the door and knock. If anyone hears my voice and opens the door, I will come into him and dine with him and he with me. So here it says that, Jesus said, I stand at the door and if you hear my voice and open the door, I will come in with you and eat with you. So Jesus would eat with us. He would stay with us. He would live with us. So I think it's very important that the Father would eat with us wife and the children what if there are guests who come still they should all eat together and then they can interact with the guest now some i know that uh, many people uh, especially when i noticed i went to africa the the guests will eat with the husband and the wife and the children will eat uh, in the kitchen in this way what happened is there is no communication. They have no opportunity to communicate with the guests. So let them interact. This is a way to help them grow. If you want them to grow and also uh, to build up the relationship with the husband so that eating together will build up the relationship. So dining is a time to communicate, to build up the relationship, to enjoy life together, to laugh together to influence the family, how we can influence our life and how we can talk about issues and talk about Jesus. So how to remember and how to apply. So what I'm going to do now is to, uh, for each session we have, I have uh, questions I've set. So I'm going to go through these questions um, so that it will help you. And also I will send these questions to you. Whoever requests this, I will send a question so that you can um, use it to uh, review the material and the PowerPoint too I can send to you all okay first questions here what are the main differences between male and female why is it hard for them to have good relationship the big difference is that males pay attention to action uh, to have fun for some people and have direction and female have more interest in relationship, in communication, in talking about feelings. Uh, men is more interested to, that they handle their own feelings. So they all have different, uh, uh, they're interested in different things. So it's, uh, if they don't have love for each other, then it's hard to build up the relationship because the man would, you know, uh, would not, uh, they chase after the girl when they want to get married but it's like a task it's a job when it's done he thinks it's all over so I just come home and eat and and that I'm a good husband already if I work and I come home to eat I'm already a good husband and they don't think of after getting married he has to talk and and uh, listen and respond to feelings and and a lot of times men Think that the women have too many feelings why are they so emotional why are they always so unhappy about little things can't you just forget about it and so uh, this caused a lot of problem uh, if the man learn to listen to the woman and respond and say nice words and say yeah I heard that you feel unhappy I want to care about you uh, uh, what are your concerns? I'm willing to do things about it and I want to spend time with you and and say positive things to you so that you feel happy. That way the, um, the wife would feel supported. The wife would feel uh, uh, loved and then the relationship would be good. Okay, so second question Males don't like to talk about feelings and females have to talk about feelings. What problems would this create? How can we handle this problem? That uh, Because men usually when they have emotional problems, they like to hide and they like to do their own things or sleep and forget about it. And uh, they just want to solve the problem. And women want to talk about the problem. So when a woman has some emotions, what happens? Then she needs the husband to listen to her to her but then if the husband 
doesn't respond in the right way. Then the wife would, would say, you, um, you don't respond to me. You don't care about me. You, your response has no feeling. Uh, but if the, hus if the husband finds this problem, he can ask her, how would you like me to respond? Uh, and he can do this. He can say, oh, I heard that you're unhappy. I heard that you feel hurts. You, uh, you want to be loved. You want to be cared for. I am willing to do that. So if the husband is willing to respond to her feelings, then she will feel happy. And, and he can say, yeah, I'll face it together. And I'm sorry for what I've done wrong. Please forgive me. And I'm willing to change so that our marriage will be better. So this is a, a, a good way to handle the problems. And then how can, uh, and then the third question is, females have a strong sense. Now for men, they need time out. They want to uh, uh, take care of the problem that by themselves. Then the wives sometimes need to leave them alone. Don't keep asking them, what happened, what happened, what happened? And, uh, and the husband need to learn to, uh, the husband need to learn to respond, uh, I mean, uh, the husband need to tell the wife as when it's possible tell her what has happened so that the wife would feel you know feel uh, more peaceful because the wife would feel very unhappy if uh, the wife would be uh, very unhappy if the husband is very sad but he doesn't want to talk about anything so the husband need to learn to be able to talk about um, uh, what he's going through so that the wife can go through this together and or pray together to face the problem okay so if you can hear me and see me please respond okay number two uh, number three females have a strong sense of responsibility and would nag easily how would males handle how should males handle this problem what uh, the way to handle it is that he would ask her, uh, tell me more about it, what can I do, how can we face it together, then the wife would feel supported and then she won't nag so much and then, uh, and then there can be agreement too with the wife and say, uh, instead of telling me so many times, can you just tell me one time and two times when I ex understand you don't have to keep repeating and then I'm willing to do, you just tell me what to do, I'm willing to do it. So this is what, these are ways that the female will feel more, uh, have a sense of security, that, that she can trust that the man is uh, doing what she needs. You know, there are a lot of times the wives need something done, but the husband doesn't care about it. That will hurt the relationship. Okay, uh, and then common problems in family. Question, generally it is hard for males to love and care about the family. Why is it important to change it? How can males learn to love and care? Now males uh, generally, they care about the things they are interested in, the things they like to do more. So that's a general tendency. What, what the male, if they want to get married, they should realize that in order to build a good marriage, they should do what the Bible tells them to do, is to love the wife as Christ has loved the church. So if he doesn't change, then the marriage will have problem. It can break, uh, break down and then has different problems. So it's, it's important that the husband and the wife, and the wife should learn not to nag so much, but to communicate in a peaceful way and not to let her emotions out of control even though when the husband doesn't listen and she would uh, say well um, uh, to herself okay my husband hasn't learned to listen to me and I want to get peace from God I want to be uh, peaceful in God uh, God loves me my husband hasn't learned to love me yet I want to be, uh, be nice to her to him so that he can gradually understand me and I can tell him what I like her, him to how I like him to respond to me how he I like him to respond uh, to talk with me to listen to me and respond to me so these are ways that that um, the wife can help the, the husband okay now here's a, a question of yourself 
How are your feelings toward your spouse? Are these feelings positive or negative? If they are negative, do they affect your life and your ministry? So here the question is, um, so do, what feelings do you have toward your spouse? There are often, some people have very negative feelings. They say, I, I don't like this relationship. This relationship is so different from before the marriage. Now she's always nagging or the husband is not listening to me. It's all kinds of problem and I'm not happy and I don't like him or her. That way, then there is a danger. <clears throat> so we should all work on the, the relationship and prevent <clears throat> prevent negative things from happening before they happen. So uh, if your feeling toward your marriage is negative, we need to work on it. If it's positive, we want to make it more positive. Um, if the feeling is negative, what happens is these are sins in the sight of God. It would affect the relationship with God. This will affect ministry. So as ministers, we want to build a relationship that is loving. That we want to build a relationship that is loving. Okay, number six, why do people hurt each other easily? How do we avoid hurting each other? So why do they hurt people easily? Because that's human nature. Human nature is to follow the sinful nature. The sinful nature is to be angry and respond with anger and yell and nag and these are uh, sinful nature so that's why people hurt each other easily why do negative emotions come often to families how do they affect the families because when one person's needs are not met when one person's feelings are not responded to then they would have frustration and anger and sad feelings so this will affect the family and break it up uh, break down the family and cause problem. And then number eight, do people naturally appreciate people much? Is it important? How can people learn to appreciate each other? Appreciating each other is very important. Now many husbands will say, she knows that I love her, so I don't need to tell her. But the fact is, she always likes you to tell her. Actually, everyone likes other people to tell them how important it is, uh, how important the person is. Now, male don't need appreciation as much as female. Males like appreciation, but they don't need it so much. When they're interested in something, even when no one appreciates them, they will keep doing it. But for female, when she's not appreciated in the family, she would feel very sad and unhappy. Then she would have emotions storing up inside her. So, um, we need to learn to appreciate each other. And Jesus appreciates us. He said, when you do it to a little one, when you give a cup of cold water, you know, I will, you will not lose a reward. So this is Jesus remembering what we do and He will respond to us and bless us now and forever. So in order to build up a family, a marriage relationship, we need to have more appreciation. Number nine, is it true that even Christians follow the sinful nature easily? How does that affect the family? How do we manage our sinful nature? Yes, even Christians, they yell at each other. Uh, I've heard from many Christians that in the family, they have yelling and all kinds of problems. So it's something that we need to face and, and we need to have the presence of God. And then we are aware using the five steps of victory. First, I'm aware that I have uh, uh, negative emotions or negative responses and then it's destructive. Th third is, uh, what does the Bible tell me to do? Number four, pray for forgiveness and strength. And number five, I choose to obey. I choose to put down my anger. I choose to bless the other person. Now, sometimes f negative feelings don't go away right away. We need to relax in God and enjoy God and have strength from God. Uh, and then gradually we can have the joy come back to us. It takes time to build up the emotions. It's hard to build up positive emotions. It's easier to keep the positive emotions that we already have. But if we don't have it, we need to praise the Lord and love the Lord a lot so that we have a stronger uh, positive emotions. Okay, number 10. Please explain the vicious cycle of marriage and children relationship and how they affect the whole person. So for any relationship, if it's not taken care of, if the uh, husband and wife relationship, it will go down more and more. 
So if they don't listen to each other, they dislike each other, they don't talk to each other, they yell at each other, neck each other, it will go worse and worse and they have m and more and more negative uh, feelings and they will complain and they will yell and fight and, and uh, even have uh, extramarital affair and even have divorce. So uh, it would go worse and worse. And with the children too, if the children don't feel loved and cared for and then also the children don't respect the parents and then what happened is the children will give up on, st on the studies and they give up on uh, uh, on the family they don't obey the parents anymore and then what happened is they would they can become uh, you know people who are out of control and don't uh, give up on their life okay God wants to heal our lives so I uh, Isaiah 61, 1 to 3 says that, you know, the Holy Spirit come upon us to give us anointing to preach the good news and also to bring healing to people, to heal the brokenhearted, to comfort all who mourn, uh, to give the joy, oil of gladness instead of mourning, and also to set free those who are in bondage. So God wants to set us free and we can set ourselves free and then we can set other people free. Number 12. What will happen to a person if he continues to live in sadness and problematic family relationship? What happens he, he will lose the joy of the Lord, he will lose strength, he will have no more strength, he will uh, give up on uh, his ministry, he will even lose faith in God, he will have a lot of negative feelings, hatred or anger and frustration inside, it will destroy his whole life. So. Family is one way Satan enters many people's lives and destroys their lives. So we want to keep, you know, put family in a high priority. Actually, the priority should be first is God, next is family, then is our relationship with other people, and then ministry. First, we have a good relationship with God and a good relationship with family and with other people that we're always blessing people, helping people, nice to people, and then we do ministry. If we don't have the other things right, if we don't have a good family relationship, if we don't uh, uh, treat other people nicely, we should not enter ministry. And uh, some people say, but my spouse is not cooperative. Then what happens? Well, if uh, the person is not cooperative, then there must be a cause. So we want to counsel and find out the cause and try to solve the problem and uh, now it's sometimes they need counseling sometimes two person can handle the problem but it's it's good to have counseling to solve a family problem and we'll talk about counseling in future sessions okay now uh, number 13 how can God bring inner healing to us is inner healing just brought by praying so the he inner healing is not just praying. Praying would bring some inner healing. There has to be a change in the mentality and say, God loves me, God cares about me, so I don't have to be affected by people. I don't have to have garbage staying in my life. I have to clear the garbage. I want, I want to have joy and strength. So we need to take care of uh, our problems inside of us and take care of the problem with the relationship to learn to forgive and have compassion on the other person and be nice to the other person and then the relationship will restore. So if you just pray for someone, okay, restore the family and send him home and he goes home and yell at a spouse, it's not going to fix the problem. It's not just praying, it's also loving, following the commandment in the Bible, to love the wife and to submit to the husband and to submit to each other and care about each other and uh, help each other and appreciate each other and these are all biblical teaching. Uh, so inner healing uh, is, you know, firstly is counseling the heart, the person to take care of problems in the heart and counseling him to take care of problems in the relationship or family and then in the prayer to for God's presence to bring healing. We'll talk about this in a future session. Okay, so how not to be affected by family members? Sometimes some family members are very negative. So we need to learn, learn to not to be affected by the negative feelings of the uh, other negative family members. 
So Jeremiah 17.9, the heart is deceitful above all things and desperately wicked. So can some family members be controlled by their sinful nature and hurt people constantly? Is it easy for them to change? How can we accept them? So can some members be controlled by the sinful nature? Yes, that happens very often. Many family members have a lot of hatred, anger, frustration, uh, unsolved feelings and no love. So it's a very real. Is it easy for them to change? Not easy at all. It mostly, most habits are hard to change. It's hard to change habits. And then how can we accept them if they have this problem? We accept them by understanding that they have been hurt and they you know have their needs and they have their needs have not been met their feelings have not been uh, uh, calmed down and so they they have all these feelings so we want to have compassion on them and be nice to them and bless them and help them so we accept them say first we accept them before we can change if we don't accept them there's no more change is it Number 15, is it true that it's hard for some people to change their behavior? How can we learn not to be affected by them? Now, some people can hardly change. Maybe your spouse, they have been like that for years. Or maybe yourself is like that for years. It's hard to change. But if we make up our mind in the Lord that we want to change, sometimes you change, but your spouse doesn't change. We still want to continue to change so that we can affect the spouse so that the marriage has a chance to be restored if he doesn't change and we don't change then what happened is the relationship will not be healed so if the other person doesn't change we need to learn to not to take the garbage but to rejoice in the Lord to have strength from the Lord so that we are not affected by the other person Psalm 37 7 be still before the Lord and wait patiently for him to not fret when people succeed in a ways when they carry out their wicked schemes. So how can we learn not to fret because of wicked people? What can we do when they do something bad to us? So first, that uh, if someone is bad but he succeed in his way, we'll say, well, God will bless me. And I pray for blessing for the person. I pray that that person will be blessed by God, that he will repent and change his way even if he's successful in worldly ways he's not successful in godly ways that God is not pleased with their lives but we want to bless them so that they are uh, that God is pleased with their life so we need to put down the anger because the more we have anger the less blessings we have from God but the more we put down the anger the more and and follow God the more blessings we have from God so if they treat us badly, we need to turn off, turn the negative words off. That's very difficult. The moment when they are yelling at us, we can be calm and peaceful. Uh, and then we just be nice as much as possible. We can say, okay, thank you. I'll pay attention. I will do as much as I can. I thank you for your effort. You have been trying hard and you have done well in many things I will try my best and uh, please give me some time so we can so we can uh, say in a nice way or even when he, uh, the person is unhappy you can hold his hand or, or massage him if he's willing for you to do that and uh, you listen to him or her while holding the hand uh, that would make the, the relationship uh, easier okay 17 quest, question number 17 James 1 19 be swift to hear out slow to speak slow to breath for the wrath of God man does not produce the righteousness of God so how does listening help us in personal relationship listening would calm people down listening let people know that I'm paying attention to him or her that I care about him or her that I want to respond that I want to make him feel good so this way it would calm him down and and build up the bridge because very often we don't understand the person but we listen and then we can understand the person number 18 when people speak too much how does this affect the relationship when they keep nagging or keeps uh, talking about what they want to talk about what happens is it will block communication so it doesn't produce good effects I met some people that when they see other people they always keep telling about their own problem I have a lot of problems and 
and it doesn't build up relationship. It just makes people feel tired of them. So talking too much is not the right way. Number 19, why doesn't the wrath of man produce God's righteousness? And how can we calm ourselves? Because the wrath will always bring hatred and yelling and fighting. So we want to calm ourselves down before we talk with our spouse. And the way to do it is to pray to God and believe that He has a wonderful plan. He can heal the family. He can do something good. So I hope if you find problem with your family, please write down the questions and I can respond at the end. Okay, so number 20, how long does people's negative words stay in the air? How can we learn not to be affected by them? The negative words only stay in a split second. The reason why we keep thinking about those words is because we say it's unfair. He can say that to me, it's unfair, it's not right, it's not true. So we keep fighting that. But we can just say it doesn't matter. What he says is doesn't have authority. What he says is it's not true. Now, if it's true, we'll, we'll admit our fault and ask for uh, uh, admit our fault and ask for forgiveness. If it's you know what the person says is not true, we don't have to take it seriously. We say, God loves me. If I follow God, God will bless me. Now, this is not easy to do, but that's the only way not to be affected by people that will put down what they say. But we don't say it to them. We don't say, I put down what you say. But we just in the heart, we just put down what they say. Don't take it seriously. And number 21, what does it mean that people's negative words are garbage? Are people garbage? How can we handle garbage? Okay, people's negative words actually came from the sinful nature and came from Satan. It, it can destroy people, so it's garbage. Are people garbage? No, people are not garbage. It's uh, negative words. People are precious. And how can we handle garbage? The way to handle garbage is first to, to uh, handle it and you know, make it dissipate and say, it doesn't matter what he said to me. I don't have to take it seriously. It doesn't affect me. It won't hurt me because God will bless me if I follow God and I can have the peace of God. I don't have to think about that. So to handle that and then to try to forget it and concentrate in something positive, concentrate in good things that God is doing right now and good things the other person is doing. He might be doing good things, but he's also yelling at the same time. So we want to remember his good things. Number 22, please explain the five steps to victory. How not, uh, these five steps are how not, how not to be affected by negative family members. So awareness, destructive, Bible, pray, and obey. So first we are aware that we are affected by someone and we know that it's destructive. And what does the Bible say? The Bible says, don't fret when uh, you know, someone succeed, uh, some uh, s sinful people succeed in their ways. And then uh, pray for forgiveness and for strength so that I will put down what he says and then obey. Now, I know this is not easy because people say, it's unfair. It's not true. What he says is not true. But the more we hold on to those things, the more we are hurt. So we want to, to put down those things and not to be affected by the garbage. Number 23, how can love bring healing to marriage? Why are people reluctant to love someone in problematic relationship? Because only love can soften a person, make him feel peaceful, feel loved and important. He is cared for, so he is willing to change. For instance, God changes us by loving us. When we repent and believe in Jesus, He loves us and change our life. And then also in our daily life, when we, you know, sometimes even when we sin, God's love comes to us to forgive us and, and melt our hearts, melt our anger and sadness. So that's God showing His love for us. So it's God showing His love to change us. So we can do the same thing for people that we Love them first uh, before they love us. And why are people reluctant to love someone in problematic relationship? They say, because he hates me, he hurts me, he has done so many things, why should I love him? It's unfair. But the more we hate, the more we yell back, the worse it will be. So we don't want to yell back, we don't want to hate, but instead when we love, we have victory. So we can tell ourselves, when I love, I have victory. 
when I have victory, Satan cannot destroy my family. And then number 24, James 5.16, confess your trespasses to one another. Trespasses to one another. How can saying sorry heal relationships? Said, I'm sorry I have done something wrong. It will make the other person realize that we are sincere and it will be easier for the person to forgive and to, to uh, rebuild the relationship again. So saying so sorry is important. Have people who hurt others easily been hurt by other people before? When we know this, how can it help us to forgive? Uh, people who hurt people easily, they yell a lot because they have been hurt from childhood. They've been hurt by many things, many people, and so they have a lot of anger. And so they pour out this anger at people. Uh, if you have someone like that in your family, it's difficult. But if you have more love toward the person, gradually it will melt his sadness and anger. And, uh, and our love can change uh, his life. So then when we have compassion on the person, Oh, he has been hurt by so many people, then I have compassion and then I would pray for the person and bless the person and then be willing to forgive. And then we, if we are willing to do that, God is very happy with us and He will bless our life. When someone does that to the family member, God will say, this is a person I will use. I will, uh, someone I like. Number 26, give some examples of saying words of grace to people. We can say something like, oh, I'm happy to have you. It's so nice to have you. You are nice to me. I thank you for everything. I love you. And then number 27, give some examples of saying words of law gently. So these are the ways. Exploring and guiding will be saying, oh, is there any way our relationship can be get better? Do you believe our relationship can get better? What can we do to make it better? And uh, uh, do you think we can go back to like before the marriage, before, when we, uh, before we got married, our relationship was better? Can we go back to that condition? So exploring and guiding. And then teaching would be uh, suggesting some way we can improve. So can we talk to each other and listen and respond to each other more? Can we uh, uh, listen more and uh, first before we respond, can we respond to what the person says? Sometimes people say one thing, other people will respond a different thing. For instance, uh, uh, someone says, you hurt me. The other person say, well, you did this to me, therefore I hurt you. Instead, he should respond and say, oh, I'm sorry you were hurt. I'm sorry I hurt you. Now that's responding to the feeling of the person. But people are not willing to do that. They want to defend. So they say, I didn't hurt you. So it's defending, proving, saying, I didn't hurt you. Instead of responding, oh, you feel hurts. So we want to respond to the feeling. You feel hurts. So I'm responding to your feeling. I'm sorry, you feel hurts. I, I, want, uh, I want to bring healing to our relationship. I want this hurt feeling to go away gradually. I want to do something to respond to you. Now, these are ways to respond to the feeling of the person. Instead of saying, I didn't do it. It's you. It's your problem. Those are all denying what he said. So pay attention to that. Uh, pay attention that we don't deny people's feeling. And then requesting. Can, uh, can you do something for me? Please do something for me. I'm very happy you can do that. Rebuking sometimes, but first use guiding and exploring uh, other ways. Rebuking is like saying, uh, what do you think, uh, how it would affect the children when we talk like that, when we yell like that, how would it affect the children? So it's saying it has negative influence and then guiding the person to, to uh, repent. Number 28, give some examples of guiding people to change by God's grace. So guiding people to change by God's grace can have a few steps. The first step is, um, we can say, I want to build a relationship. I want something restored. First, I want to. And do you think it can be done? Do you think the relationship can be better? And what are some ways that it can be better? And do you think it's workable? Can we start to do it? And I appreciate that you respond and you are cooperative. So appreciation. So first is saying, I have the desire. And do you want to? Do you think it's possible? Do you want to? What are some possible ways? Is it workable? 
and uh, uh, how can we start? And I appreciate that you can talk with me and start doing it. So these are some way to guide a person to change. By God's grace, instead of yelling, some people yell and say, you have to change, you have to stop talking like that, you have to stop nagging, or I'll run away. So these are all negative ways. And I know you all have seen this happen and you, you know that it doesn't work because there's no love in it. It's always rebuking and uh, responding in anger. It, it's not going to fix the relationship. Okay, and then number 29. Nine, why does accusing people often produce negative effect? People like to accuse, but it, it's not going to produce positive effects. It will always produce negative re response of anger, of frustration, because uh, the more we accuse, the people will defend and they will fight back. So accusation is not a good way. Okay, and how to bring healing. Ephesians 5.21, submitting to one another in the fear of God. And then wives submit to your own husband. Uh, wives uh, submit to your own husband as to the Lord. Should husbands force wives to submit to them? What does mutual submis submission mean? How can husbands help wives to be submissive? So, um, should husbands force wives to submit to them? Uh, you know, the, the Bible... When it talks about this passage, it talks about submitting one to another. So it's not forcing. And also talk about pastor and member relationship. The pastor will shepherd the, be a good example to the flock and not be lording over them. So again, it's not a controlling. The Bible never talk about controlling people to make them submit. The Bible doesn't talk about that. But some pastors think that that is the way. My people have to submit. If not, they have to be punished. So that's uh, making them to submit by force. So that's not, that's not the biblical way. And uh, so mutual submission means, you know, uh, like the husband would listen to the wife and then responding to her needs. So, so he would not be just forcing the wife to submit. And, and how can husband help wives to be submissive? When the husband is kind and loving, and also the husband will explain to the wife that uh, the biblical teaching is that I love you, and I try to love you, and then for you to submit so we can both do it together. I'm willing to love you more and more. But the submission should be according to God's way. We cannot say, uh, wife, you cannot go to church. You, you have to do this, you have to do that, and you cannot go to church. Uh, you cannot spend so much time praying. So it has to be according to God's word. It's not a human submission. It's submission to God's way. 31. Which one is more important? Matters or relationship? Relationship is always better and uh, more important. And if people pay attention to matters more, it will hurt the relationship. Okay. Explain the five languages of love. Words of affirmation, quality time, giving gifts, acts of service, and physical touch. So words of affirmation would be like, I love you, I care about you, you are important to me, I need you, I want you. And uh, quality time is to spend time together uh, without watching TV or the cell phone. It's time to listen to each other and, and look at each other and responding to each other. And giving gifts, giving gifts that the other person like. Uh, it doesn't have to be expensive and acts of service, any kind of service. When I, my wife and I come home, we always try to get the slippers for the other person. When we brush teeth together, we do a lot of things together, we brush teeth together and we'll get the toothpaste for the other person. So we try to help each other in many, many ways. Uh, we ask each other, can I help you? And physical touch, it, it brings uh, a feeling of love to people too. So find out what your spouse want and write down what you want and then see if it matches that uh, the exercise, that what you want the, in the order was most important to us and what do you think the spouse want and then, and then she'll write hers and then we'll say, okay, how can I do it? How can I do this to you? Number 33, explain the concept of love bank. Only when we put in that much love and care, that the love and care will come out. If we don't put in love and care, the relationship would have bitterness, 
bitterness and not much love. So Proverbs 5.15, let your fountain be blessed and rejoice with the wife of your youth. Do you have the desire to make your wife be blessed? Why don't many people have this desire? How can you start to do this? So many husbands don't have the desire to make my wife happy, to make her enjoy life, to make her uh, always enjoy the relationship. Uh, but many husbands don't have the desire because they say, my wife neck too much, I don't like my wife. Uh, she's talking too much, she's too controlling. So all these negative things will hurt the relationship. So we, want, we don't want to, uh, we, we want to for, forgive and forget and build up the relationship. Uh, so we start to do it by forgiving and forgetting and appreciating each other. Okay, now... Okay, I see some response there. Okay, number 35. Why do many people have the tendency to accuse, yell, and nag? What should we do in order to influence someone? People have the tendency to yell, accuse, and nag because uh, people have negative thinking and negative feelings, mostly. Even Christians can have negative thinking and feelings and unhappy, unhappy feelings. So then they have a tendency to say, you didn't do it. Uh, we have a tendency to compare and say, and, and, and use the law to measure people and say you didn't do it. So what should we do in order to influence someone? Uh, we should uh, guide them. We should be nice to them, to change them gradually. Okay. And then 36, if your spouse does not want to change, how can you change yourself? If your spouse is very hard to change, then we want to enjoy God and have the strength and so we can be nice to him or her and hopefully one day we can change your spouse and, and pray for him or her to change. And then how to build a relationship with children. Uh, 37. Do children watch our behavior? How should we set a good example to them? Children watch our behavior and learn from us. So uh, when we are parents, we want to have a good example realizing that what we do is visible to God all the time and visible to other people. So our lives are visible to people and it will influence other people. So we want to set a good example. Uh, that good example comes from our heart, our life, that we have a, a real relationship with God and then we want to obey God. And 38, why is it important to build up friendship with our children? Uh, how do we do that? Because when we build a relationship with the children, then the children like us and want to spend time with us and want to talk to us. And then we can influence them and we can enjoy the relationship with the, with the children. The way to do it is to listen to them, pay attention to their needs, be happy with them when they're happy. If they're sad about something, we, even though they've done something wrong, we can still say, I'm sorry this happened, I feel unhappy that this happened, and let's try to fix it together. And try not to just keep telling the children what to do. Some parents think they keep telling the children what to do, it will change them, but it will turn them off. So when we have good relationship, then it's easier for us to influence them and actually enjoy life. And then 39, question 39, Colossians 3.20, 21. Father, do not provoke your children. How do we avoid provoking our children? The way to do it is to respect them. Uh, uh, when they've done something wrong, we don't just accuse them, but we say, oh, uh, what do you think about that? And actually, we should always say, you're precious, you're, you're a good child, I like you, you're important to me. So we can s tell them that you're important. Uh, and, uh, and now I see some problem, and how can we fix it? Number 40, how do we communicate with our children? How, what do we have to avoid? The way to communicate is more to listen, to respond to the feeling. Don't just say something but teaching. Don't just teach, but respond. They say, I'm unhappy. Tell me about it. Uh, why are you unhappy? Tell me. And then sometimes the child will say, uh, because you yelled at me. And then they say, you did something wrong, that's why I yelled at you. Instead, we say, I'm sorry I make you feel that way. I hope you feel 
I want to make you feel loved even though even when I try to teach you something I want you to feel loved number 40 how do we communicate with our children what uh, okay just answer that 41 should father mother and child children eat separately my answer is never because uh, it's a time to communicate and build up relationship is a time that we can enjoy the relationship okay now we're going to answer some questions I see some questions if you have questions please put it on whatsapp okay now first question if your wife continue insisting that you have relationship and sex with another woman and yet you don't know miss a word there and yet you don't you haven't done it how can you handle her and to off not to offend her now if she thinks that way that means um, we might have done something to make her suspect that that so we want what we want to do is in front of people always say this is my beloved wife and tell people the good things about a wife and and tell people how much we appreciate a wife and how my wife has been nice to me she's such a wonderful woman I thank God I have her then the wife will feel secure and avoid close contact with women uh, we don't keep talking to one woman we talk to you know we need to talk to women but we we talk to different women don't we don't just talk to one woman we don't just build a relationship with one woman we it's you know we care for everyone in the church so uh, it's very important that we have this good example uh, if she already suspect that and it didn't happen then I think it's to build up the relationship with her to assure her and uh, and to spend more time at home so that she knows that you have no time we have no time to be with another woman and uh, uh, and call her from time to time now I I call my wife a lot of time I tell her where I go so she knows where I am that I won't be going somewhere to another woman so uh, that we are accountable to the wife okay so I think that comes from some problematic relationship that already exists before that time uh, so first build up the relationship to make her feel loved and to say sorry if I make you feel uh, you know insecure I want to build up the security I want to spend more time with you so you know that I I have no time to spend with another woman and then tell her what's happening even in our ministry like uh, now I have to visit this woman but I'm gonna go with another person I'm not going alone I'm going with another person to visit this woman and, and then tell the wife at the same time and ask the wife to come along if she has time then she knows that she can be part of it okay number two if a woman continue insisting that you have sex affairs with her and you don't want how can you handle her without offending her uh, okay well if that's someone now if that person is in the church that person should be handled uh, should be you would bring one or two person talk with her and say okay you don't want to have sex with anyone other than your husband uh, then you you know that we have to say no because this would hurt our life and our ministry and our future and our marriage everything will be hurt so we need to understand that when we give the devil a foothold we'll, the devil will destroy our whole life so we just say no and then if the person is a Christian we have to handle that in the church we, we tell the person don't say this again and don't have this thought again if if it happens again I have to bring one or two men to talk with you together to handle this situation and then if you, you still don't repent we have to talk to the whole church because then she is seducing someone to have sex with her uh, now if the person is so clear saying I want to have sex with you then she's already sinning there is we have to tell her that uh, but we can say her tell her in a kind way we we'll, we'll say what do you think God would think about this 
uh, what will happen to our lives if we have sex so this is something how can you handle that why do you have this thought how can you handle this lust in your heart so we want to help the person that's the first step if the person doesn't listen then we bring someone to talk to her and if there is someone really saying that to you saying can I have sex with you uh, immediately we say no and uh, it's better to have a woman present to help the person if you want to help the person okay three can I divorce my wife for any reason the only reason is um, it's uh, adultery if uh, she has adultery uh, now even if there's adultery we don't have to divorce but divorce uh, when there's adultery there's reason for divorce and uh, now if the wife now if someone continues to steal money and continue to beat people in a family harshly seriously uh, that you could ask someone to handle it uh, to counsel how to solve the problem if a person is a gambler and taking money from the home and keep steal, uh, stealing money from the home then it's a real problem uh, some gamblers they just destroy the whole family in that situation you know they they steal everything and they uh, and and uh, they destroy the family and that's a can be a reason for divorce even though the Bible doesn't say that but if a person continue to steal money and take the money and uh, uh, from the home then the other family members have no money to live on then there is a reason for divorce uh, but we want to counsel so I now a lot of times it's like this the husband doesn't love the wife doesn't listen to her and so she she yells a lot, necks a lot, and then so that is mutual. That's not a reason for divorce. There should be counseling and help each other to, to uh, handle the problem. Now, if you can specify more uh, conditions to me, and then I can answer it in the next session after the, uh, the lunch. Number four, if a child rebels, how do I bring him or her back to Christian life? Now, uh, it's hard when the child already rebels the best is to bring him or her up in Jesus way to show them we love God uh, that we have the presence of God we have the joy of the Lord It's so wonderful hallelujah when we enjoy God and so we enjoy God and then the children see that and then they want to follow God more and uh, so it's not just teaching it's just not just telling them to go to church but we live out the life of Christ to influence the people around us if they already has turned away from God then we uh, then we want to pray for them and approach them gently instead of forcing them and ask them ask them why they want to turn away from God is there any reason uh, can I answer your questions uh, there are some concerns some reasons so try to reason and talk with them and respond to the feelings if they say I don't like the people in church we don't say well they're nice it's just your problem but we say oh I'm sorry that they make you they gave you that feeling can you tell me what they did and then see whether we can handle the problem so respond to what they say the feelings and their needs and then if they say well it's because of you you your behavior makes me uh, reluctant to go to church then we say I'm sorry please tell me how I can change so it, then it's a fault a fault number five uh, question here how do we help a couple that the wife is a Pentecostal and the husband and the husband is a cult religion okay now in that case then we can only help the wife to love the Lord more and have strength from the Lord and pray for the husband to be nice to him to be kind to him to hopefully one day change him and to pray for him uh, that the Holy Spirit will work in his life to take away the work of the of the evil spirit that uh, with the strong presence of God and with uh, love uh, to change there's no guarantee way because you want to change another person that person might not respond so 
There is no guarantee to be able to change a person, but we change by love and by good example and by the presence of God. The presence of God is strong, then sometimes that can change a person. Or if we pray for the person when the person is sick and the person experiences the Holy Spirit, then we can bring the person to Christ. Or we pray for a person if he cannot sleep well or have emotion problem, you know, emotional problem and pray for the person and the person experiences the peace of God and then there's a chance he would believe in Jesus. Can you change a root child? We don't change a root child. We guide them to change. We, so it, cha it started from childhood. It started from childhood. It could be the way the parents treat the children. It's always in a root way. Some, some parents think, I yell at the child and the child has, to, child has to obey me. And then when a the child grows up, then he will yell back at you. So uh, we should not teach by root uh, ways of talking. We should teach our children by good example and by in gentle ways. So if he's already rude, then we'll uh, guide him to think, to say, well, w uh, the way you talk, uh, uh, what do you think about that? What do you think other people would think about that? How would it affect your life? And t do you think there is any way to change? Do you want to come to God for repentance? And how can we change in a, uh, gradually? One first step, what is the one first step we can uh, do to change? So guide them to change step by step. If one person is not faithful to marriage, how can you handle it to avoid divorce? Then we'll try to bring the person to uh, repentance and also build up the relationship. That Now in other sessions we'll talk about counseling and then also about marriage counseling. That how they communicate with each other. Are there some ways they are hurting each other constantly? If they're hurting each other constantly, then there's a tendency they want uh, to have extramarital affair and have divorce. But if they try to treat each other nicely, then there's a chance they can restore the relationship. So it's by forgiveness and confessing of sin and being nice to the person and understanding and caring about the person, responding to their needs. And these are all ways that we can help. Okay, now are there any more questions? I don't see any, any actually uh, it's time for lunch. I know that it's already time for lunch. Do you think you can respond to me? Do you think you can start at two, uh, uh, two o'clock or no? You can just send me messages, and I, I can, I will restart at the time that you send. You send, tell me, and then I'll respond to you. What time? If it's possible at two, I'll start at two. Okay. God bless you all. Thank you all, and God be with you, and God bless your marriage, and God bless your. Uh, give you a heart to be willing to uh, to bring peace to the family, to to bring love to the family. Okay, God bless you all. And you, if you have any more questions, please send to me. Okay. Okay. The question asked was, so if um, everything uh, is, you know, works out, and then uh, can there be a remarry? Okay, according to the Bible, remarriage except because of uh, one person die, uh, if not, there can be no remarriage. Or the other person commit adultery, then the other person is free. Uh, if not, there is no remarriage. So that's according to the Bible. That, that means when there is remarriage, there is committing adultery. Um, but as a, a practice to help people, some people, um, you know, they, if they don't get married, they will have more problem. So even though it's committing adultery, they'll ask the Lord to forgive them. And then there is counseling to make sure that uh, the marriage will work well. Then it's a, a lesser evil for them to get married. Now, if the person uh, it's not counsel, it's not trained on how to handle his problem and then get married, he will probably have another divorce very soon. But if um, uh, if there is counseling to help them how to build up the relationship and um, that 
you know that now if the person can handle it being single that's the best if he cannot handle it uh, it's like uh, he's still committing adultery he need to ask for forgiveness and then he start a new life and so that uh, in order to avoid a worse adultery because if he doesn't get married maybe he has more problem uh, with adultery so that's um, the reason actually a number of churches allow the members to remarry but there should be enough counseling and uh, I now for myself I would say if the person can handle his problem then it's best not to get married again okay